Hey guys, I had somebody ask us a question on our guide and essentially the question was if I have an older system that parts of it is needing to be replaced but other parts of it is still in decent shape, should I just replace one component or another? So for example, if you had a furnace with an outdoor unit and a coil, the furnace is still good, but you're gonna replace the outdoor unit, should you replace the furnace too? And so with the new SEER 2 stuff, during the making of this video, SEER 2 is hitting the market. The old SEER 1 stuff is gonna to have to completely be gone by January 1st, 2023. And I think ultimately the answer for us at Griffin Air almost always is yes, you need to replace the entire system. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I had this person, they were telling me their situation and they were telling me that they had different information being told to them by different contractors, which is the whole reason I did this video. They were saying that some of the contractors were saying, hey, look, furnace is still okay. Let me just replace this and you'll be just fine. And then they have contractors that are saying what I'm saying, that the whole system needs to be new and it all needs to be matched up and so on. So let me go through some of the reasons why I think you should replace the entire system. And some of them may surprise you. The first is it will save you money. So it's not a sales tactic when a contractor is trying to tell you if you're going to replace this component, go ahead and replace that. And I'll give you a good example. If you were just replacing just the outdoor unit and coil, not the furnace, the price might be, let's say $5,000, okay, to replace that. And then you call them two years later when the furnace has finally seen its last day and it's time to now to replace the furnace. And they say, okay, now it's time to replace furnace. It's going to be another $5,000, okay? Now, I'm just throwing hypothetical numbers out there. Every market's different, especially helping people with the guide. I've realized some markets are a whole lot more expensive than others, and some markets are a lot less expensive. But the point is, if you've replaced the two components, if you will, the, the outdoor unit and coil, and then the furnace, and they were a couple years apart, and they were $5,000 both times, well, that's a total of $10,000. If you were to replace all of that, all at the same time, the contractor's already there, he's already tearing stuff apart, his price might be only $9,000 or $8,000 because he didn't have to do the extra work of coming back out and holding the coil up while he pulls the furnace out and all this extra stuff. He was able to just pull all the old stuff out, put it all back in, matching up. It's less labor intensive, less of a headache, and they just go ahead and put it all in new. The next reason is a lot of systems today to meet certain requirements, they have to be what's called an AHRI match. And I'll put a link to that down in the description. If you are looking at a system, you wanna make sure it's an AHRI match. I was just helping somebody with the guide the other night. They figured out after hearing me say that in another video that a contractor was installing a system that was not an AHRI match. And we're gonna talk about why that's important in just a moment, but to meet certain standards, if a manufacturer says, hey, we are selling you a system that is 18 SEER, for example, 18 versus a competing system or even competing companies installing a 14 SEER system, we're saying this is an 18 SEER, it's a more efficient system, you should get more energy savings out of using the system. Well, if you're using it matched up with a old system or mismatched system, different brand, different type, whatever, then that throws that off. If you were supposed to get a significant amount of savings and now you've matched it with a less efficient system, then you won't see as much savings there. So not only should you replace that system entirely, all that new needs to be a match as well. You wanna make sure it's an HR match and most contractors, most good contractors, can provide you with an AHRI certificate to prove that it is a matchup. And to piggyback off of that, some manufacturers, if it's not an AHRI match, they will not honor their warranties. They will say, hey, you didn't install this properly. It's not an AHRI match and we're not going to honor our warranty. Now, most decent manufacturers, they're not going to beat you up too much with that. But I can tell you that I had Nordine who now calls themselves Nortec. A few years ago, I had a Maytag system that Nortec is the manufacturer for and the supplier when I ordered the system, I didn't even look it up. I just assumed that the supplier knew what they were doing. And I ordered this Maytag system. I got the outdoor unit and the air handler. And it had some issues to where they even had to do an on-site visit to where their rep told me it's not a match. Then they sent me the match. I had the HRI certificate to prove that it is now a match. But then Nortec said years later when there was an issue that they would not honor the parts warranty because they had it in their records that when it was originally installed, 
it was not installed as an HRI match. So it's one of the reasons I don't sell their products anymore because they were, in my opinion, looking for a reason not to honor their warranties. But the point is you just don't wanna open yourself up to that. That if you are a homeowner in the market for a system, make sure that that contractor gets you a certificate even before they install the equipment. It's okay to ask, hey, can I get an HRI certificate? I saw Josh's fat face on the YouTube and he told me to get that HRI certificate to make sure that everything's on the up and up and I'm good and covered and it's a match and it's gonna meet certain ratings and so on. It's okay to ask for that. They should be able to look that up and provide that and if not, then they can go to the manufacturer and get that. You just don't wanna open yourself up to any reason for them to not honor warranties or for you to have issues, that if that system were to have any sort of issues, you would be able to call that manufacturer and say, look, it was installed to specs, it was installed as an HRI match, everything is on the up and up here, and I'm still having an issue. You don't wanna open that door for them to be able to say, well, look, you just didn't install it right, and that's why you're having this issue or that's why we're not gonna take care of you. And then the final thing I'll point out is a lot of the incentives. So if you are looking for say a tax rebate or some electric utility companies will have rebates and things like that, they will not usually honor that unless you installed AHRI matching equipment, all new. If you're doing mismatching of brands or mismatching of old equipment with new equipment and so on, a lot of times you will not be eligible for those rebate. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. If you are in the market for a heating and air system, have you had a contractor tell you it's okay to reuse a certain piece of equipment? We've had situations where one of the pieces of equipment are, it's just simply not that old, that maybe a handyman or somebody that didn't know what they were doing just replaced one or two of the components. And of course, we've got a homeowner that is saying, well, listen, this component's not that old. I want to reuse it. And I would say in most cases, that's not going to be okay. But if it's not that old, you might actually be able to take that piece of equipment and then figure out what you need to replace everything else with. So it is an HRI match, right? In that other example, if you had a furnace that did not get replaced when the other equipment was replaced, then you now can go and look at HRI and say, I need this furnace, so it is now all of a match, if that makes sense. I remember when I first got into this trade years ago with R22 refrigerant and some of the equipment and so on, efficiency ratings didn't matter as much, and R22 was pretty forgiving. You could just slap that equipment in, dial in the refrigerant, and it would work. But those days have pretty much ended. 410A refrigerant is not as forgiving, and some of these newer refrigerants will not be as forgiving as well. When you have some of this equipment, if it's not matching, then you are asking for problems. You could have coils freezing up and not the right amount of airflow or whatever. Is it possible to put it in and make it work? Of course. So that's like saying, is it possible to put a Chevrolet motor in a Ford? It's possible, I guess, but does it make sense? In a lot of cases, no, that there are too many problems or things that can happen if you don't do it correctly. So anyway, I know there's some heating and air guys out there that may disagree with me. Feel free to comment. I'm okay with that. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this. I can tell you that there are exceptions to every rule. One might be that if you are putting in, say, an electric mobile home furnace, maybe they don't make an actual HRI match with that. That's one example I can think of off the top of my head. Do you have to do an electric furnace with some sort of system that is okay to install with an uncased coil with that furnace? So just throwing that out there, if you're in that situation, we've crossed that road a few times where folks will say, I saw in your videos, it's got to be a match. And I'm, I have to tell them, well, this mobile home furnace maker does not make an outdoor unit or coil that'll match with their system. So that's just one example. But I think ultimately, I'm just hoping this video helps you avoid some of the headaches that I've had in the past. And I think people are continuing to have today. So anyway, let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.